Hey guys, I think I'm live. Uh, so hey, hi everybody uh, and happy Halloween season. I'm so happy to do this live. Uh, I was really excited about uh, this challenge, to be honest. Uh, whenever time that comes to uh, Halloween, I get really excited. I want to do Halloween theme illustration. Uh, and so I think this is the perfect challenge for this. Um, so yeah, I'll be I'll be live for about an hour. What I prepare for you guys is just a few tips, a few steps to help you uh, with your pumpkins uh, this week. Uh, we have this challenge. It's going to be all week long uh, up till uh, Sunday. We're going to have some prices as well to give. Um, so yeah, as usual, uh, if you are in the chat, let me know if you hear me well, if you see me well. Also, you can let me know uh, where you are in the world. This is always super fun to see everybody on different continent. I am presently in Colombia. Uh, it is 10 a.m. And, and yeah, pretty excited about it. I want to say hi to everybody in the chat right now. I'm already seeing a few people. I want to say hi to Elizabeth, uh, Surya, Ag sorry if, if I mispronounced that, but Asgat Chatales. Uh, thank you so much for being there, guys. Ava, uh, friends, uh, Riverson. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for joining this live. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to, first of all, I'm just going to remind everybody, if you're looking at this, if you don't know what is a challenge, we are doing a digital um, pumpkin or digital carving pumpkin challenge. <laughs> I said that right. <laughs> uh, let me just uh, share my screen for a second. I'll show you the, the, the page. Basically, if you go on the registration page of the challenge, which you should have a link in the description below, uh, you'll be able to download the, the free download kit that comes with the pumpkin that comes with the challenge that you can download to start with, or you can start directly from one of your sketches. Uh, this is really up to you. And if you go a little bit down the, the page, you'll see also how to win the prices. We have a few prices for this challenge. Uh, and if you basically just share with the hashtag paintable pumpkin on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and also Pinterest uh, this uh, this time, you can post your thing on a Pinterest board that we have specifically for this challenge. And you have those prices basically, uh, you'll have the kickstart bundle kit, which is three of uh, my most uh, my most important uh, courses or uh, masterclass, I would say, uh, it's one about sketching, uh, rendering, and coloring. So if you are a beginner slash intermediate artist and you want to just have a really good foundation, this is like the kit for you. Uh, so there's one kit to win there. Uh, we have three months in the academy as well and a few of the one of the most popular uh, classes that I created, the advanced hair techniques. Uh, I want to say hi to everybody that's in the chat that's showing up. I'm seeing the chat going on. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, guys. Uh, so yeah, what I'll do today is I have prepared for you just a, a little presentation of uh, a few steps on how to carve the pumpkin. Now, like I was saying, you can either start from the pumpkin that you can download on the kit. Once again, link in the description if you don't have the kit yet. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to start with this or you can start with your own sketch. What I'll do is I'll start with the pumpkin so you have a clear example from this. I'll show you a few steps, uh, a few a few tips and tricks here uh, just to help you. And after all of this, I'll take any question that you guys may have. Also, I want to remind you guys that if you are done wanting the kit, I'm also giving 10 free brushes. Uh, those are the sketching brushes that we have in the Academy that usually are available only in the Academy. Uh, but if you're participating to the challenge, I wanted to give you just a little gift here uh, to help you with your sketches. So you can download those brushes by downloading the kit on the um, on the website, uh, and so and that's that's what I wanted to say. Uh, I'm seeing a few people saying that they're from uh, different places around the world. Uh, so I'm seeing Maria from North Carolina, um, and I'm seeing a Raspberry from uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and that's awesome. Lots of people already in the chat. Cool. Well, let me jump right in with the material, guys. Uh, I'll make sure that you can have full view of what I'm doing by making sure that Photoshop is there. Uh, and so, yeah, let me jump right in on that. So first of all, what I've presented what I started here is just to give you like where that I, I started my point when I started the, 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 the this uh, pumpkin. So I have the steps here. Let me just put them a bigger. So basically like in a nutshell, sketching, environment, local color, um, those three first steps are already done for what I have today. I'm going to talk about details today, how to push the, the pumpkin basically. So let me put that back in here uh, and I'm going to do that on this. So what I've prepared here before even starting the lie, I'm going to move this here, is uh, just a few steps. Like I was saying, so I downloaded the pumpkin uh, as you can do on the um, challenge uh, page. Then I created a sketch 
Uh, if you don't know how to sketch yet digitally, I also give you a few stencil and a kit. You can start from there if you want. Uh, then I put some environment uh, in this one. I changed the color. So a little bit of a red all around it and put the flat colors. And what I want to do here is just give you a few tips on how to push it from there, how to give it a little bit more realism like I did on this one. So hopefully these uh, will help you uh, a little bit. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at the chat for a second. Um, so yeah, all right, let me just jump right in with this. Um, like I said, I'll take all the questions that you may have afterwards. I'm just going to show you what I have for now um, to help everybody. So we're going to talk about lighting uh, in this presentation. Uh, I don't have exactly precise steps, but basically all we have to do is to match the lighting that's already pretty much on the pumpkin. So as you can see, I already had like a cast shadow. So I know that the lighting comes in front hand and there's one rule that is very important to basically render the, the mouth here. And I'm gonna present that to you here on another layer. Basically, it's a rule that says that the most perpendicular uh, surfaces or plane that the light hits will have um, the most light. So let me just do that here on, um, you know, I'll create just a new layer, whoops. I'll create just a new layer and show you that where I, where I mean, or, you know, I'll put that on black actually. Uh, so let's say that I have like a surface that of the mouth, right? So we have like, you know, the mouth of, of it and I'm just gonna do that very simple. You have the mouth that does like, whatever this, let's say, and then there's another teeth there, right? So when the light comes in here to hit the bottom of our mouth right here, the light is going to basically be all those rays of light going here. When it hits the most perpendicular, so perpendicular being like 90 degree angle kind of thing, when it's the most perpendicular, this surface will get the most illuminated. And that's the best way to, 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 to be able to just kind of do it from imagination. So when you're looking at, let's say, the light here that comes in, here, the angle is almost 90 degrees, it's going to be very illuminated here. But here, this angle is a very large here. And this is going to get darker, basically. So that, in a, in a nutshell, that's what we're going to do here. So I'll give you a good example. So right now, I just put the flesh of the pumpkin all yellow, all uniform, all the same color. Uh, but I'm going to just try to basically match it with the ambient light that we have. Uh, and once again, if you have any questions about this, I'll be more than happy to answer them afterwards. I'm just gonna show you what I have prepared first. Um, so I'm gonna create a new layer here. I'm gonna lock it in pixels to it. And I'm gonna start with a soft round brush. When you start with a soft round brush, it's just going to help me to have like that basic rendering. Then I'm gonna start with, um, with hard edge. So what I'll do is I'll start with the eyes. So here we will have some shadow and here the light is going to hit a little bit more. So I'll keep it light. I'll have some shadow here too. So that's already good. And then the, then the mouth here, the same thing here in the corner, it's gonna get probably a little bit darker. Same thing here. And the rest will be in the light. So that's just the base of it already. I'm gonna create a new layer here. And with this one, I'm going to create uh, with a hard edge brush. So something harder. And now we want to do, we want to do the, the same thing that we're going to do. I'm going to first, I'm going to put the sketching line just a little bit more in transparency here. I don't necessarily want them. You know what? I'm going to take them out completely because right now we're already at this point. What I want to do is modify the flesh here of the pumpkin to just match the, the light. So I know that this angle here is not going to have a perpendicular angle to the light. So it's going to get darker. And at the back here, is going to be the same thing. It might even get a little bit darker than that. So I might just try to get it even darker. And you'll see it's gonna start taking form and the light is gonna make even more sense. Here there's a little curve here. So maybe that part here actually reflects the light a little bit better. So I might just put that here. This is like almost in the shadow of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna put this here at the top, just a little bit darker, even maybe more than that because it's probably in the shadow completely. Something like that, I think. 
then maybe this one is even more bright. I might push it even more bright just right here because this hits the light even more. Here we have another angle. I'll put this one a little bit darker. And I might just put the other side just almost as dark. Here, here's an interesting thing. When you're looking at this, the, the, the triangle here, the, the, the very top here, that's actually perpendicular. So what we could do is just kind of have that zone here where it just gets a little bit more light. Because as, as the form turns, it's going to basically be per perpendicular to the light. So I'm going to add just that hint here. Then I'll do the same thing kind of here, because that would make sense. And I'll just continue. Maybe this one here hits the light even more. So I'm going to get it just a little bit more bright. Then something like that goes a little bit darker. Then we have another angle here. So I'm going to put that darker. Maybe against on the top, it's going to get just more pale. And I'll have this here a little bit dark as well until it goes here. So as you can see now, it feels like, I'm going to zoom out, it feels like we have some light on it. I'm just going to put those two together and flick it. We went from no, no light, no 3D aspect to something that looks a little bit more 3D. So very important, thinking about the light angle and how it hits the surface is really going to help you here. The other thing that uh, a pumpkin has, uh, like if you're looking at this one here, the one that I finished, all the corners here, you see where it changes the color from bright orange to dark orange. Same thing here on the teeth. That's a cool, a cool effect to do because it basically tells the pumpkin that it's getting old. And when it gets old, the, the, the skin of the pumpkin basically kind of shrink uh, because it loses, I'm assuming, its water. And so it starts to like shrink uh, and it gives a lot of character to the pumpkin. So I think that's one thing that we could also do here. Uh, try to do that slowly. I'm going to create a new layer. Uh, and then we'll take just a pale value here and kind of, I'm just going to take maybe another brush. I'm going to keep this one and kind of just have that, whoops, I'm going to take out of this here. Am I at the right place? Right now I'm not out, that's why. And have that change of color, change of value here where the pumpkin basically becomes a bit old. We'll do the same thing at the top here where the mouth is. I might even go darker. And just doing this is really going to give a lot of character to this pumpkin. I'm not going to do it everywhere. My goal is not to finish this pumpkin in front of you here today, but really to give you just enough tips and tricks for you to be able to just push the realism the details of your pumpkin. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker, this a little bit darker, and try to just add a little bit of character to this pumpkin. I want to say hi to everybody that's just joining in. Uh, so to give you in context, I'm giving just you guys a few tips on how to push, uh, yeah, push your pumpkin a little bit. Um, so I'm also going to probably, what I'm looking here, I'm probably going to just push the shadow here on the corner just a little bit more. Like there's a cast shadow a little bit from this angle. That's going to help to create just a little bit more 3D aspect. That's already looking better. Um, and then I'm just going to go back here to adding some light on the corner of the mouth, making sure that there's just a change here. So that's another trick that's super, that's super cool to do. If you have any like reference of pumpkin, which I would do definitely like uh, tell you to do, if you never did a pumpkin before, have a few uh, reference pictures, nothing wrong with having reference pictures. It's, it's actually the best way to learn. You cannot draw what you never saw before. Um, that's just impossible. So always good to have some reference pictures. I'm just going to put that corner here a little bit more. We could do the same thing even with the eyes here. 
having the corner of the eye just getting darker here and same thing with the bottom here where it's going to hit the light that might just go back inside a little bit and hit the wall so doing all of those things i'm not going to do it all of it but you can already see that it's going to add just a little bit more character let me zoom in bing bang bing bang it's going to add already had a little bit of character to it so that's another thing once you had place the light on each you know on each surfaces on each plane of the mouth of your pumpkin try to imagine the skin of the pumpkin getting a little bit older which will get like you know just a little bit inside like this and then just wherever it's turning away from the light you want to have that that edge to get a little bit darker whenever it's turning like in front of the light you want to have that edge to be a little bit more pale and it's going to add a lot of character to your pumpkin just right away so that was another thing that i wanted to show you guys so if you have difficulties with this uh yeah that should help let me know in the chat if that makes sense if you have any question also i'll i'll finish what i have prepared for you guys and then i'll answer all your questions i'll take some time to uh to answer all your questions so those few steps already i think it's already good now i didn't finish the eye here but uh you can imagine that where it would go um the next thing i want to think about is the reflection of the pumpkin now i'm doing a pumpkin in daylight here or you know with a spotlight i'm not doing a pumpkin with a candle in it that would be completely different uh tactic uh, which maybe eventually I could do but for now today we're thinking about like there's a spotlight on our pumpkin which means that we're going to have some some specular reflection on the skin like I did on this one I've been pushing this zone right here so we want to do the same thing here two tricks that I want to give you here first of all uh adding some uh, bright colors we'll do that but I want to so show you how to do it with uh texture brushes adding some small particles brushes and i have a few of them here from the skin brushes i think from uh, from paintable here so if you have already those brushes you'll be able to use them um, otherwise any kind of um, texture brushes would do and what you want to do is put this on either overlay or uh, color dodge see what it does color dodge usually with a darker color would do a better effect I think in this case I'm going to go with an overlay and I'm just going to see what I can do like I want something that's not too saturated I want something that turns towards the towards the yellow too so I might just go with something more yellow um, and I might just change a different maybe something like that I'm on my new I'm on my separate layer so I'll be able also to play with the opacity if it's too uh, if it's too bright i'll be able to put it down and what i'm going to do is i'm going to paint just a little bit of that of that texture right here you see all over the place and then i'm going to put down the opacity and that's going to add a layer of details that you wouldn't have otherwise once you have this uh one thing that you can do is use just a, a um, an eraser saffron brush eraser to just kind of delete wherever you're not supposed to have them like in the eyes i would not have that texture maybe in that little crevasses i will map on that little thing here too just making sure that you didn't just spray the texture everywhere otherwise that's going to look uh it's not going to look as good and then i'm going to create a new layer and i still want to push the um the highlights here i want to get something that's like closer to what i have here uh, so you just want to bring that color push it up a little bit uh don't zoom in too much and then just think about all right where where the light would hit that um that pumpkin that's going to create um a reflection one thing that i like to do when i do a reflection like this i'm using a uh, mixer brush tool that basically kind of smudge them it's going to much smudge also like all the texture at the back so i might have to redo the texture but the effect that it does is so nice that I, I wouldn't mind. Just trying to push that a little bit more. Not too much. And as you can see now, it feels like it's, it's a little bit more of a reflection. If you're not pushing the reflection too much, a cool trick to do is to use a color dodge with the saffron brush. I'm going to use a saffron brush here. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to put that to color dodge. Once again, a darker color would do a better job. And you can see it's going to just 
really push the saturation and light very easily, giving you that high reflective skin that we really want on that pumpkin, really. So you can see right now, just a few steps, it's already really good. Now I could do the same steps that I've been showing you on the mushroom, uh, but I won't. I think you can imagine that. Hopefully these steps will already help you to just push the realism, the texture of your pumpkin. Uh, that was the goal of this um, of this presentation for today. Uh, I'll stay with you guys uh, a few more minutes if you have any question whatsoever. Uh, I'll get back here with my picture here. I don't know if I can make this picture bigger. Uh, but yeah, I'm back. I, if you have any question, let me know uh, in the chat. You can put a capital Q in front of your question. So this way it's going to be easier for me to read it. I'll stay with you a few more minutes. If you have any question whatsoever about uh, digital painting or the challenge itself, uh, it's going to be my pleasure to answer them. Uh, so you can go ahead uh, and shoot away. I'm going to see if there's already something maybe in the chat. But... I'm uh, not seeing something for now. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. I'm not seeing anything. So for now, guys, if you have any questions, please let me know in the chat. Uh, for the rest, I really hope that this was helpful. My goal with this presentation was really to just give you a few more tips for people to be able to push uh, the realism of your pumpkins. If you have any question, like I'm saying about anything about digital painting, uh, just let me know. Put a capital Q. It's going to be easier for me to see it. Uh, I see rut uh, app that says you missed it. Are you going to go upload it? Yes, you'll be able to see this uh, video live uh, recorded on the uh, paintable YouTube um, channel account. Uh, I'm also going to upload this video afterwards to the Facebook uh, paintable uh, group i'm losing my english today <laughs> i'll be i'm going to upload it also to uh, to facebook so you'll be able to see it at multiple places so if you missed it don't worry uh you'll be able to see this okay i got some question coming in um so i'm seeing uh dewey says how to manage mini brushes uh, i'm not sure of the question do you mean how to do you mean how to place them on your photoshop uh photoshop comes already with uh folders uh to be able to basically create some order in them. I don't know if that's the answer of your question. Let me know if, if I'm understanding that. But if you're talking about putting orders in the many, many brushes, I'm creating folders uh, in Photoshop, which works really great. You can also, you know what, I'm just gonna put my face bigger. You can also, um, you can also find some, um, some plugins for Photoshop or for other software where you can uh, create some groups to create some order to it. Um, so yeah. Um, Jill says, any tip on masks? Uh, yeah, I, I do. I, I would have for you to be just a little bit more uh, precise, but here I can probably show you what I already have prepared here um, to show you. So let me go back to here. So you see that, 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 um, that pumpkin here, I already created myself a mask here. Uh, the mask is here. So you can see I created this mask. Uh, it's really one way that I like to do. Masks are great when you have to render something uh, with, you know, precision. You create the mask and then you put it in it. Um, I mean, I, I could give you precise ex example, but I have nothing prepared here. So you, you take me out of guard. But I'm using masks on a lot of things. I, I like to use group masks. I like to uh, use masks on layers. It's really a great way to, to, to render things um, efficiently without having to care about the outline. You basically do the form once and then you get into it. So yeah, um, hopefully this is helpful. Um, and if you have more precise questions, please feel free to uh, to shoot them again. I'll just go back to me. Hey guys. Um, to, 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 um, will you do a short summary video? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, uh, uh, Clarella. Um, this video is going to be uh, still on the paintable uh, YouTube account. So if you want to see it again, you'll be able to see it again. Um, how do you make the border so clean, smooth like that, says Kyle. Uh, it's just a question of practice, really, and taking your time. Uh, there's muscle memories. There's, you know, and personally, I'm, 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 for me, this is a great compliment. I don't think my lines are that clean, to be honest, but I'm fine with it. I like to play with textures. So here's a, here's a tip for you. Uh, don't, 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 don't care too much about how your line works. You'll get better with time. Uh, just try to have fun while you're doing things. 
Uh, for me, I don't even think that my lines are that good or my my borders are that good. It's a question of taking your time, uh, not rushing too much. Uh, you'll get there with, with practice. Um, Ru Russo says, can we make the pumpkin any format, uh, like a horse, for example? Yeah, you can, absolutely. That sounds like hilarious. Do it. Uh, yeah, definitely. You have full um, carte blanche, we say in French, which I'm looking for the translation in my head right now. But you can do it, it, anything that you want, really. You can start with the pumpkin that we give in, in, on, the, on the paintable kit, the paintable uh, challenge kit, or you can start with your own design. It's up to you. The challenge is just all about carving pumpkin digitally uh, and let your imagination run wild with it. Um, Punk Bird Art says, uh, any tips for lit up glowing pumpkin? I would, I have nothing prepared, but what I'll do is, you know, this is the first time we do this challenge. Next year, I'll be more prepared. Sorry to have you make wait for a year. I'll probably gonna do some glowing stuff uh, within next year before that, but I don't have anything prepared for it. Um, it's, it's just, it's different. It's a different technique than doing this one. So I'll be prepared next week, uh, next year with actual tutorials. We really created this challenge on, you know, on, this, on the corner of the table, uh, just to create something fun because I'm excited about Halloween and I wanted to do pumpkins. Uh, but I'll have some precise tutorial about it. But if you want to learn about subsurface scattering and glowing things, uh, we are working as as we speak on the lighting module uh, for the Academy, the Digital Painting Academy. That should come early next year. So just keep an eye on social medias and your emails if you're on a mailing list. I'm going to send emails about this module about lighting that's going to tell you everything you need to know a lot more than just glowing pumpkin, but how to do lighting from imagination. I'm working on it right now. It's going to be soon uh, ready for, um, for you guys. Um, Julio says, is there a minimum resolution size for the image? Absolutely not. You can do whatever fits with your computer. So um, I'm seeing a lot of people using uh, iPads. If your iPad doesn't have the resolution needed, just shrink it down, really. Uh, the idea isn't that it's big, it's just to carve something. Uh, so yeah, uh, any resolution works. Uh, Sain, sorry, I'm having a hard time pronouncing that. Sayon Ninsan, uh, how to move your Photoshop brushes to clip studio paint. Um, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I wish I could, I could tell you, I'm, I'm assuming that's something if you do a quick research on YouTube, you'll have a video of someone already creating a tutorial about it. Uh, but I do not use Clip Studio Paint, so I do not, not know. So sorry about this. Uh, Surya says, uh, for the challenge, is it okay to add some characters to the background? Absolutely. You can either, you know, the way I, I created this challenge, it's really to have fun. You can start with the pumpkin if you want and keep it things simple, do the stencil, have some fun. You can watch this video uh, again later on when I'll finish it. It's going to be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, you'll have a few steps on how to get there, really. Have some fun with it. If you want to go beyond that and create a full-on painting with a pumpkin and upload that for the challenge, Absolutely, that's a good entry as well. Anything that has relevant pumpkin carving uh, will be accepted in the challenge. Um, -pum -pum. Uh, Bayan says, uh, how to practice using tablet for digital drawing? Any tips? I have a lot. I have nothing prepared once again right now. Uh, but what you can do depending on your level, first of all, depending on your level, there's a, a lot of free material on the Paintable uh, website that you can go have a look. Sorry, if you go to paintable.cc and you go into the tutorial section, you're also going to find the um, the um, the um, ultimate beginner's guide for digital painting, which has a lot of tips on just how to start with sketching and just understanding the tools, uh, and then. From there, if you want even more uh, about how to use sketching and everything, in the tutorial, we have a, a teaser of the sketching uh, module from the Academy. And yeah, in the Academy, obviously, I have all those uh, premium tutorials. I have hours and hours and exercises, homeworks. Really, the, the Digital Paint Academy is getting better and better. I'm working on creating some... Uh, some new learning paths right now. I'm really excited, actually. I'll give you all the news very soon. I'm working on it right now. But anyway, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question here, but if you want tips on how to just get better uh, with your tablet, it's a question of practice. There's certain exercises you can do, very simple exercises like practicing with your shoulder on how to make circles, how to make lines. Those kind of things will give you just enough understanding on how it works with it. The best thing is really practice. Having cool exercises to do with is the is the 
the best way to do it, obviously. So if you go to the Paintable uh, website, paintable.cc, you'll have a lot of free material over, uh, already there to help you uh, get started with this. Um, Bob, hey Bob, I uh, assume it's uh, one image per person and does it have to be a pumpkin only or can we use a human body example? Yeah, I saw your example, uh, um, Bob. As long as whatever you're doing looks like a pumpkin, texture at the very least, uh, I'll accept it. So if you want to do a whole body that's made of pumpkin, go for it. Uh, I'll accept that as well. Uh, Carlos says, how to come up with art account name? That's, that's, I'm not sure. What do you mean? You mean like finding like an artist name? Is that what you mean? To come up with an art account name? Yeah, I guess I'm assuming that's what it, I don't know, that's very personal, right? I'm using my own name. Uh, so, so uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm the best person to give you advice on this. Uh, Abdullah says, um, hey, I hope you are doing well. Well, I am, thanks. I hope you're doing well too. Uh, I have a question about shading. Can you please explain how to shade each color? Thanks. That's, that's a big one. I mean, when it comes to shading, because what you're seeing, if you just said shading, I would say fine, but color, it, there's a lot that comes into it. There's one trick though, one cool trick that I can show you right away. Let me go back to Photoshop here. So when it comes to any colors, right, uh, it's hard. First of all, if you don't know color theory, um, you, you, it's going to be hard for you to know what's, what's the, the color of the shade uh, that you're trying to put. But there's... There's one thing that really works well, and let me just give you an example here. I'm going to make a, um, I'm going to make a yellow circle. Wait, I'm trying to, right, I'm blocked by this thing. There we go. I'm gonna make a yellow circle here, fill it up. And let's say that you have that yellow circle and you're like, all right, so how do I, how do I put shadow on it or what's the color of the shadow I should put on it? The shadow should always be a little bit more saturated than the local color. The local color is the color of the object without any light. Now, this is like as a theory and theory because without light, you don't see anything. So it doesn't make sense really. But just think about it. If you take out the highlights and the shadow of the object, the color in between would be the local color, basically. And so if you're taking the local color of the object, let's say we have a, a circle, a sphere here that's like this green. What you want to do is go on your color picker here, which is the square. And you want to do an L. I call it the L recipe. Basically, you can go and do an L towards the shadow which goes down and saturated. I'm going to give you an example in a second, but goes down and saturated and change the hue a little bit. And you want to do the opposite L, L a reverse L to get the highlight. So look, look at here. So I'm taking this color here and I'm going down and to the right. And it's going to give me a darker, more saturated color. And I'm going to move doop, a little bit the hue to get just a little bit of change in hue. And that, I'm going to use a hard edge brown here. That will be, let's say my color of the shadow, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing here for the highlight. I'm gonna go up and to the left this time, the reverse, I'm gonna move a little bit the color. I'm moving the color because usually in the shadow you have like different colors. There's a lot more to learn about this in color theory, uh, you know, um, the warm light, cool light and all that, the reason why we have different lights in the shadow. I'm not gonna go into that, but if you just want a quick trick right here, this one will work perfectly. And then what you have to do is just kind of, whoops, you kind of just have to blend those colors together. And this way you'll have just a quick recipe, something that you can just, you don't have to know about color theory. You can do the L recipe on anything. It works pretty much all the time. You see that's already pretty looking good. The only thing that would be added to this is bounce light, which will come in this environment from the pumpkin. So you can imagine that we have like a little bit of orange that would bounce on it and maybe like that red that would kind of have a little bit on it but beside that the l recipe works like a charm so hopefully this is helping you um because yeah because i cannot i guess i cannot go uh, in more detail than that and now i'm not prepared uh, but i hope i hope this was helpful as well uh, and thanks for the question that was a cool question um uh, da -dum -dum -dum. Uh, Arte says, uh, Arte Gemma says, I wish I could draw like you, but my original art is just boring. First of all, 
there's one thing that I keep telling my, my students is be careful of the way you talk to yourself because the way you talk to yourself will bring you results as well. If you don't have the experience that I have, don't imagine having the same the same outcome. It's a question of practicing. It's a question of having a game plan. It's a question of just putting the effort every day. You don't have to be the best artist to have fun. You don't have to be the best artist to have great progress. Progress and momentum is really what, what you should focus on at all time in your career. Don't try to look at the final outcome. If you want to be the best of the best, you'll get there if you keep at it every day. It's a question of momentum. So what I want to say to that is, first of all, thank you. I appreciate that you like the way I draw. Um, but even me, I'm not where I want to be. I just enjoy the ride, enjoy the, the progression of seeing my art. It's really a question of keeping your, yourself positive. So just keep at it. You're doing the great work already by being here, having an interest in it. Keep at it. You'll get better. Julio says, um, can post the entire process in a single day? Uh, yes, you can do that. Uh, absolutely. What I would like for you to do is to progress every day because it's also a community challenge here. If you don't have the time to do it uh, every day, then do it on, uh, on one day only. You'll have more chances to win at uh, the prices uh, if you put it every day and it also if you put it on many uh, social medias. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, if you don't have the time you want to do it on one day, do this. I'll say that though. There's one thing that I keep repeating once again to my students. It is better to draw 20, 30 minutes every day than putting seven hours of it on the weekend. The momentum, the habit of painting every day, it's going to give you a lot more or better results with time than drawing 10 hours on your Saturday, for example. So if I were you, I would try to just put a little bit of time every day and share your progress. Sharing your progress is a good part of your progression uh, and uh, uh, getting better as an artist. Uh, so yeah. I'll just say that. But yeah, it's it's absolutely up to you. Uh, Dewey says, uh, Nacho, just want to say amazing. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for sharing that comment. Uh, Adela says, another question about line art. Uh, how can I ride off back out lines? I'm, I'm not sure what that means, Adela. Can you please uh, precise that question for me? Uh, Surya says, can we post more than one post different pumpkin project absolutely if you're able to do more than one pumpkin this week go for it it's all about pumpkin this week i want to see all your imaginative pumpkin i already saw great sketches great uh pumpkin already finished uh you guys are amazing so keep adding the good work you can put absolutely more than one um ray says how to achieve the lighting from inside even with additional light from above that's going to be hard, um, you see, um, because if you have a light on it and then a light from inside, they will kind of cancel each other. You kind of want to have a darker environment to have that glowing effect from the inside. It's doable, but it requires just a little bit more trick. And I'm not prepared to show it to you here right now. But I promise you this, guys, I'll create a proper tutorial for the next time we do this challenge uh, to teach both how to do the lighting on it and from inside it. Um, a bunch of people saying thank you. I uh, thank you so much for joining me, guys. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with you guys. Uh, Kyle says, can I get a job if I don't know how to do traditional art? I started with digital art and mostly YouTube talk. Believe it or not, the, the way to do digital art is very, very close to traditional. But the major thing that changes is the medium and how to play with the medium. But when it comes to anatomy, lighting theory, perspective, color theory, you know, sketching, all of those things, they're translated to traditional and to digital. There's, there's no difference. The techniques might slightly change, but it's only based on the medium. The way you're going to play with the paint versus the way you're going to play with your iPad is very different. But the anatomy body is the same. So to answer your question in a, in a nutshell, yes, absolutely. Most of professional artists do only... Uh, digital art for the professional career. If they do traditional, it's probably going to be like for themselves. Um, mine says, uh, do we have to post every day uh, till the end of the challenge to win? No, you don't. Uh, the more the more you put out there, the more ch uh, chances you get to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to win the prizes, obviously, but you don't, like I was saying. Uh, I'm encouraging the progress, not only for winning, guys, but because I think really that the habit of putting your work out there is uh, definitely the way to go to get better. Uh, so that's what I'm encouraging. Just 
push your progress, your process every day. Uh, this is going to help you a lot. By the way, if you guys are joining right now and you're like, why is he talking all the time? It's because I already did the presentation. I'm answering questions. If you have questions, let me know. I'll still be there with you for a few minutes. And as soon as I'm finished, this video will be uploaded to YouTube officially. Uh, it's going to stay there as well. And you'll be able to see the presentation that I had at the beginning. Um, question, question. Um, you can uh, learn the car for sure. Uh, Okay. Um, okay. 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 So I have MM says you cannot imagine how I want to learn how to color in Photoshop, but I cannot buy your course because I don't have PayPal. Uh, I don't use PayPal. <laughs> uh, you can uh, definitely take a lot of free material, first of all, in on the paintable.cc. If you have any uh, question about sketching, coloring, rendering, I have a lot of free material there. Go check paintable.cc, you'll have a lot of there. Um, if you want to participate to the premium courses or be part of the uh, academy, I'm not using PayPal, to be honest. Uh, if you have a credit card, that's all you need. Uh, but like I said, if it's out of your budget, I can totally understand that. It's not for everybody. That's why I'm making those free videos, those free challenges to really give as much as I can to the community. As a big thank you for just everybody that supported me for all those years uh, and is there to uh, draw with me. I really appreciate it. Um... Kyle says you're amazing. I don't know about that, but thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Ray says, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. You guys are absolutely welcome. Um, Abby Root says, how to add personality to Pumpkin? I want uh, to do a good uh, headed jackal. Uh, well, when it comes to personality, it's, you know, it's a question of like, what do you like, really? What I did when I created my Pumpkin, the first thing that I did is I went to check at the design of real pumpkin to get inspired. There's so many great pumpkins now these days. So go check that first, get inspired by it. Then what I did is a few sketches. I did a few sketches of different pumpkin that became stencils basically to help you with it. It's important to not do just the one idea you have in your head. Do a few sketches, do a few thumbnails, push your ideas. This is really the best way uh, to get better at anything, right? It's just to not do the first thing in front of you, not do the, the easy thing, try to push a little bit more. And if you do a few sketches, you have a few ideas, you're starting to find new ideas this way. Um, this is the best the best way really to, uh, to push your ideas and your style at the same time. Surya Perry says, thank you so much. You're welcome. I always enjoy to learn a lot from your challenges. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you say that. I'm planning on doing more challenges in 2021. 20, uh, uh, I, I got full of ideas in my head. Um, uh, so I see Nora says, what are you doing? I'm, I'm presenting. <laughs> uh, and says, how can I give you a shout out? Well, there you go. <laughs> um, uh, da -da -da -da. So yeah, for everybody that just joined in, once again, I'm talking on the camera right now because this is the Q&A session of this presentation, but the video will be uploaded. You'll be able to see the whole presentation as soon as I finish. I've been showing a few tips on how to carve your pumpkin digitally. Uh, that's all in the beginning. I'm just going to take a few more questions, let you go, guys, and you'll be able to see that video. I'm also going to open, upload that in the Facebook group later on. Uh, Julio says, which topic are evaluated in final art? There's no evaluation. Participation is the only thing that you need to do. So even if you're doing the worst pumpkin in your eyes, it doesn't matter. I just want to have fun with you. So as long as you're doing your pumpkin, it's going to be great. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be there to you know help you with this kind of um, live videos. I'll give you a few tips. I'll give brushes uh, so to help you with this. But I'm not expecting you to be the best here to win. You just need to participate. I'm going to take people at random, people that participated all week long. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so really just I want to um, I want to reward progress, momentum and participation. That's what I want to reward. Uh, not the best. Um, sorry. Once again, that's the name I'm not able to pronounce. I'm very sorry. Maybe you can break it down for me in, in syllables. But Sayon... Jin San uh, says, also, um, I don't have the money to pay uh, your course, but I wanted to make a little animation for you as a thank you for these free classes and resources. So you're doing for us. Would you like that? Absolutely. That, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. Uh, make sure to tag my name if you put it on social medias. Uh, I'll have a look at it. Thanks. Um, 
<laughs> Can I get a shout out? Nora, I said, hi, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Adela says, I mean, how does your pumpkin does not have any black outlines? It's a question of uh, taking them out. If you're looking at this video, which like I'm, like I'm saying, you'll be able to see it as soon as I finish this presentation. You'll be able to see it. I basically just take them out, right? So you want to just have them put your flesh of the pumpkin in it. Uh, you'll see anyway. Uh, so it's a question of just taking them out. Um, Abby Root says, thank you, you're welcome. Nora says, thank you, you're definitely welcome. Julio says, little characters with some hearts. You're all, all, all welcome. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna finish this one. So everybody that's here, if you wanna see the tricks, this is the moment. Uh, you'll be able to see the tricks that I started with this presentation live. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna just share for, for everybody's teaser. So I've been giving a few tips here on Photoshop on how to just push this. So I'm going to uh, basically finish this presentation and you'll have this. I'm seeing just one question that come in. I'm gonna take that says, can you offer one one-on-one -on -one art lesson? I do not offer one-on-one -on -one art lesson except for the iffy uh, students, but the classes, the, the doors of iffy are closed right now. So I'm very sorry. I don't know when I'm gonna open them. We are actually doing the iffy course right now. If everybody is in iffy, in the, in the chat right now, a big shout out to all of you guys. You guys are doing great work. Very impressed with what's happening. I'll share your progress with the rest of the community soon. So with all that being said, I'm going to finish this one. Thank you so much for joining in, guys. It was a pleasure to have you with me. If you have more questions, uh, you can always join the Facebook community. There should be a link either in the description of this video or uh, on, the, um, on the registration page of the challenge. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I'll talk to you soon. And as usual, happy painting.